Hello everybody, I'm Blazing Rebecca and welcome back to Lads in Distress. Um we we're just looking for information on three princes. Print like three prince. D each different prince. Um how about Prince Mur? I d do we know the name Prince Mur. If my memory serves me right, Prince Mur of Water Kingdom disappeared almost seven years ago without a trace. Oh, okay. When he finally reemerged weeks later, he was voiceless and somber, a pale shadow of the child he used to be. My eyes sparkled in excitement. Why? The only thing that excites me more than curses is the possibility of meeting the great magician who breaks them. I want to learn more about Prince Mur. I need to. And I know exactly who to consult. Of course. <laughs> oh my god. Uh... Finding Nicole takes a good half hour and way more dedication than I normally would have been bothered to put in. He turns around with a hearty laugh and teasing glints in his eyes before I can say a word. As noisy as ever, I see. Your footsteps are loud enough to shake the whole castle. It's a miracle the castle hasn't collapsed already after years of your stomping. St stomping. As soon as ever, I see. Your ears are keen enough to hear the, the ants crawling round. Even I could tell how pathetic my comeback was. Nicole leans against the wall and gives me a triumphant smirk. Well, I know you didn't thunder over here just to make small talk. What is it? You know me too well. Try guessing what I want from you, too. Hmm. Is it about the guest list for the ball? Close. A particular suitor. There's been a silence, and the awkwardness is so palpable that I find myself tripping over my next sentence. You offered to give me information on any of the guests I asked about, remember? That was the agreement we made. You can't go back on your promise now. For a brief moment, Nicole's expression twists, but then his easy smile, smile returns, making me wonder if I imagined the whole thing. Which suit are we talking about? After all, there are so many on the list, you're going to have to specify. Well, what do you know about Prince Mer of Water King? After a brief moment of hesitation, Nicole begins to chortle. You picked the most interesting suit to ask me about. I expect no less from you. Interesting, huh? Can you tell me how Miss Prince Mur was so special? Well, it took quite a bit of convincing from yours truly to get your parents to invite any of the struggled suitors. Thanks for your efforts, by the way. Definitely an excitement. You're very welcome. Mur was especially challenging to invite, though. Prince knows that obnoxious is obnoxious but harmless, and Prince Zell is too busy being locked up to do anything of note. But Mur? Your refusal to call him a prince hasn't been lost on me. Thank the, to the, thank the heavens for that. To be fair, I don't know anything of anything concrete. I've just heard rumors. Honestly, I knew numerous other fairies, and fairies love nothing more than magic related gossip. Mur is quite the dangerous one from what I've heard. Oh, dangerous? How so? Because of the curse on him? Actually, Mur probably isn't cursed at all. Wait, what? How did he lose his voice and memories then? Trauma? Disease? Yeah, yeah, I have a good idea wh which one Prince Mur is from. <laughs> I try not to allow the disappointment show on my face, but Nicole Smirk tells me that he sees straight through my pre pretense. It's not that I don't pay the man, of course, but I was hoping the source of his muteness to be more magical related, such as a curse. Not only are curses a lot more interesting, but they are also more easily curable. By my hands at that. Ah, oh, that explains it. You're a curse fanatic. <laughs> Not exactly. The most popular rumors whisper he sacrificed his own voice and memories trained them for something more useful to him. Wait, he did what? Never mind, this is much more exciting than the curse idea. Exactly what I just said. Oh, well, possibly. Those who are capable of such traits are the strongest of fairies, but only the most wicked would actually go through with such bargains. Fairies so malicious would fairies so malicious would never agree to a trade that doesn't to a trade that doesn't completely topple a nation or two. Whatever Mur got in return can't be good. If one I've heard from Mary who visited the Water Kingdom and met him, he feels different now too. Wait, what? What's that mean? I don't know how to explain. Fairies just have a knack for sensing people's natures just by being around them. Apparently, Prince Mur just makes feeling fairies feel, well, nauseous now. Completely different from the way he made us feel before, if the rumors can be trusted. If he's so deadly, why don't you make my parents invite him? With danger comes excitement. You should know that better than anyone. 
I give him a dubious stare, but not buying that simple explanation. Truth be told, the murder was added purely for my sake. I may be a bit eager to see him at the ball. I finally get to see the dreaded fear of the murder in person. I'm going to try as best as I can to secretly approach him and try casting a few charms on him. Hopefully I'll get a quick glimpse into the details behind his disappearance. Shaking my head, I can't help but chuckle at Nicole's sudden childish excitement. Well, good luck with that. You know, you're really starting to take after me. I hate to admit, but you may be right. Well, make sure to tell me if you learn anything interesting. Maybe I'll do some research of my own, too, when I come across him at the ball. Nicole freezes at my words. I cock my head and a room change in his demeanor. What's the matter? Charming, you can't. Sorry, I really should have thought this through some, some more beforehand. We don't know how exactly he's evil, but we know there's something majorly off about him. We also know his confidence that his target is you. I thought I'd keep talking to him while surrounded by others. But I don't want you making any form of physical contact with him, and I definitely don't want you to ever be alone with him. I don't want you letting him even suspect that you know something's off about him. We don't know what he'll do to protect himself, especially given that he may be more than willing to hurt you to begin with. Oh. I'll try my best. Shouldn't be the same. Shouldn't the same be said for you? I'm nowhere near as important as the crown princes of this nation, and murder gains little to nothing from manipulating or harming me. I'll try my best to be safe too, though. But charming, most importantly, even if you don't listen to anyone else, I say, listen to listen to this. No matter what you, no matter what, you mustn't, you can't select Murr as your potential husband, and that's final. Understand? Of course, I'm not that naive. Nicole sighs in relief. Of course, I trust you, but I just wanted to confirm this to put my mind at ease. Your magic is powerful, but I don't know if any of us are equipped to go against Murr when we know absolutely nothing about him. I nod and we move on to happier topics. After a short while of additional chit-chat, Nicole is summoned by my parents. It's time for me to research, research some more. Well, I guess there's only one option, eh? I turn my attention back to the name from Snow of Snow Kingdom on the list. I try to remember if I've met him before in previous balls, and I can vaguely recall a lad with silvery hair and sternly blue eyes. If I'm not mistaken, the Snow Kingdom is, just, is one of the biggest and richest kingdoms. It's also conveniently just in the north of our land. If we can secure political alliance with Snow Kingdom and merge with them, it would save us from poverty. So why do my parents want me to stay away from them? I ponder this puzzling question for a moment longer before I decide to go find my parents to ask them. While I sit here guessing at the intent behind my parents' actions when I can just go directly to them and request an explanation. Oh, and of course, the shadows! After running around the regrettably enormous place in search of my parents, I finally find them reading together in one of, my, in one of the main rooms. They look at me with an identical indulgent smiles as they wait for me to catch my breath. <sighs> King Jack! Charming, what do you wish to speak with us about? I uncrumple the guest list in my hand and point to Prince, Prince Snow's name on the, on the scroll. Well, Nicole told me you had marked the names of the lords that I should stay away from, but I was just wondering why Prince Snow falls under this category. After all, isn't he the Prince of Snow Kingdom? Last I heard, Snow Kingdom is affluent and influential as ever. That would be a powerful ally to merge our kingdom with. Mother starts shaking her head before I'm even done with my sentence. Charming, you must never consider marrying this man. He's not good enough for you. Queen Gretel. Oh! Father takes my mother's hand to his and speaks up. I agree with your mother. Yes, you are correct. Snow Kingdom would be, could be the solution to all our problems. However, latest circumstances have made Prince Snow an undesirable source, which is rather unfortunate. I don't understand. I suppose your diplomatic teacher has not covered this issue yet? I shake my head in confusion. What is that awful doing? Gretel, darling, remind me to look for a new teacher for Charming as soon as possible. He turns his attention back to me. Prince Snow, as you should know, Prince Snow, as you should know, is a skirt chaser to say the least. Oh, of course! Which, my child, is the biggest reason why do we do not wish for you to have him as your husband? You deserve to marry someone who will respect you and be faithful to you, and Prince Snow is not a good candidate for that. Yes, however, the most important issue is that Prince Snow is no longer the crown prince. 
My elbow shoot upwards. What happened? Three years ago, because of the countless scandals arising from this habit, Prince Snow was thrown out of the palace. His stepbrother, Prince Rigel, currently holds the title of Crown Prince and Future King. Prince Snow was given this until his stepbrother's 18th birthday to find a worthy maiden to settle down with. Or else Prince Rigel will become king when he comes of age instead. I shake my head again, even more confused. Does this not mean that Prince Snow needs, his, needs us as much as we need him? He needs a wife. I need a husband. Our problem solved. My child, politics is not as simple as that. There is no guarantee that the current king of Snow Kingdom will make good on his word and let Prince Snow regain his position as crown prince. Oh. Especially since the king's wife, the prin mother of Prince Rigel, has been holding it has been holding almost all the power in recent years. As the king and queen jointly rule, as long as the king is still resting due to his deteriorating health from old age, the queen is in control. Do you think the queen would rather see your own Senate ascend the throne, or Prince Snow? The most important issue still... My mother shoots my father a glare before continuing. <laughs> is that Prince Snow, even though he's a kind and charming man, will never be good enough for you, my child. Yes, of course. And suddenly, the king and queen become Toriel and Asgor. <laughs> Especially with that my child mark there. Charming, you must listen to us to stay away from him. Put him out of your mind at once. Seeing the anxious look on my parents' faces, I decide to humor them by agreeing with them for now. For now! Yes, mother, father. I smile agreeably as I curtsy and take my leave. As soon as the door closes behind me, I let my smile drop and my thoughtful expression show. Interesting. Sounds like Prince Snow needs a hero to help him out, and who is better than that job than I am? I'm going to keep an eye out for him at the ball next week. For now, since I've got enough information on all three princes, I should put this matter out of my mind and go back to practicing my magic. Back to magic practice we go in the ball! Right? I try to refrain from fidgeting with my gun as I stare at the stage stream of people entering the ball. Wow, that's quite a lovely dress! I can't but notice that the majority of the guests are male, dressed in flashy clothes of the latest fashion to show off their wealth. Next to me, my father clears his throat loudly and lifts the glass of his glass of wine out, facing the crowd of guests. A hush falls over the room. Welcome to Lunar Kingdom. We are very honored that all of you could have traveled such a long way to join us here today for this ball held in celebration of my daughter's coming of age. We hope you will enjoy yourselves tonight. Let the ball begin! At this cue, the orchestra starts playing. Tara resumes among the guests and as they mingle among themselves. And I need to save, because I haven't done that in a while. Oh, hi! A man approaches me in the, in the instant the music begins. I think this is Snow. Because, like, she mentioned, like, silvery hair and blue eyes. Also, he's dressed entirely in white. Save for some decorations of a little, like, a little blue. Your Highness. He bows and I drop a curtsy in return. This is Snow, I know it. As he straightens up, I take the opportunity to study him. I notice with the start that he's extremely handsome, even compared to all the good looking princes and dukes here. Well, at least the ball will be off to a good start. His lips curve upwards into a smile as he catches my eyes wandering over his frame. <laughs> okay. I just give an innocent half smile in return on face. <laughs> He seems amused at my response, smile growing wider as he half bends over his outstretched hand. May I be so bold as to request the first dance, Princess Charming? My eyes fall into his silvery white hair that contrasts almost po poetically with his stunning blue eyes, and recognition dawns on me that it's Prince Snow. The smooth attitude, the attractive features. He must be Prince Snow. In the back of my mind, I recall my parents warning me to avoid associating myself with him, but I push the little voice away. Just as I expected, he is as desperate for a marriage as I am for an alliance, as shown from his eagerness to ask me to dance. I should take this opportunity to get to know him better. It would be my honor to dance with you. I take his hand, and he wastes no time before sweeping me into an elegant waltz. I can just barely make out the figures of my parents and Nicole among the crowd. They seem to be staring in my direction, and I can practically feel their disproving glares burning holes into my body. I'm just trying to get to know him! I pretend not to notice as I let us melt into the crowd of dancing couples. And we'll get to that in the next part. See ya!